In this video, we're going to look at a number pattern or a quadratic number pattern that has variables such as x and y. In the question, they have told us that this number pattern has a second difference of minus 10 that we can see over here. And so, as with most of these quadratic number patterns, we will simply go and try work out as much as we can from the sequence. So, what I mean by that is we will typically step our way down to the very last row. And so remember when working out the difference between two terms, it's always the number on the right minus the one on the left. So that'll be 3 minus 7, which is minus 4. Pretend that x was a number, well, you would have said x minus 3. And for the next one, you would have simply said y minus x. So we just pretend that they're numbers and we do the same as what we normally would have done. Going into the next row, we should start with this term over here, so that's x minus 3 minus minus 4. The next one, y minus x minus, and now because the, thing, the, the because we're going to be minusing two terms, we should put it in a bracket like this, or if you understand how minuses work, you know that they are simply going to change the this x to a negative, and they're going to change that minus 3 to a positive. So the choice is yours over there. And so we can't really go any further than that. However, they have told us that the second difference, the second difference is always this row over here, is minus 10. And remember, because it's a quadratic number pattern, we know that this term is also the same as this term over here, and both of those should equal minus 10. And so we can use this one, which says x minus 3, a minus and a minus is a plus, well we know that that should equal minus 10, they've told us that. And so, and then minus 3 plus 4, well that gives us positive 1, equals to negative 10, and if you had to go solve for x, you're going to get an answer of negative 11. What we can now do is use this expression over here, which if you simplify says y minus 2x plus 3, well that should also equal minus 10 because it's also a second difference. However, the nice thing is, is that we now have the value of x, and so we can just fill that in, in a bracket, as minus 11 plus 3 equals minus 10. We can then go and simplify on the left hand side, or you can solve this however you like. I'm just doing it in a particular way. Minus 2 times minus 11 is plus 22, plus 3 equals to minus 10. If you then solve for y, you're going to get a final y answer of negative 35. We now have the value of x and y. And so I'm going to erase all of this on the right hand side and I'm going to rewrite the new expression with x and y now filled in. I'm then going to proceed to fill in the rest of the sequence. So 7, 3, we know that that was a difference of minus 4. Minus 11, minus 3 is minus 14. Minus 35, minus minus 11 is minus 24. And remember, you can just do this in the calculator. So what that would have looked like is minus 35, minus minus 11, and the calculator will sort out all the negatives and the negatives for you. In the next row, it will be minus 14, minus minus 4, which is minus 10, and for the next one, it's also minus 10. But hey, we knew that it was minus 10 because they told us that. Perfect. So now, question A wants us just to work out the general formula. So remember, for a quadratic pattern, it's an squared plus bn plus c. We said that 2a is always equal to this number, 3a plus b equals this number, and a plus b plus c equals this number. In one of the earlier videos, it was probably the first video on number patterns, we introduced two different ways of solving for a, b, and c. Some teachers prefer the one method, while some teachers prefer the other. And in that video, I said that you must just choose the one that works best for you. Since that video, I've been using the one method, but always keep in mind that there is a there is a different method that some teachers use. And so if you are one of the students that has a teacher that's using a different method, don't worry about this technique that I'm using. All that you want to make sure is that you're getting the same answer. 
And so with this technique, you always start from the bottom, where it says that 2a is equal to minus 10, and so that means that a will be equal to minus 5. Then it says that 3a plus b equals minus 4. a has a value of minus 5 plus b equals to minus 4. If we then solve, that's minus 15 plus b equals to minus 4. And if you solve for b, you're going to get an answer of 11. And then the last one will be a plus b plus c should equal to 7. I got that from that over there. However, we know that a is minus 5. B is 11, C we don't know. If we have to then put the minus 5 and the 11 together, that's 6 plus C equals to 7. Solving for C, you should get an answer of, if you are in a test, oh wait, let's first fill in the f actual answer. So that's minus 5 N squared. B we said was 11, and C we said was positive 1. Always test yourself in a test. So typically what you can do is you could choose any one of these numbers. So the 7, the 3, the minus 11, or the minus 35. I always like to choose the last one just to really see that my formula is working nicely. So minus 35, that's the value at that position. But what position is that? That's position number 4. And so I will plug position number 4 into this. Remember, N stands for position. Oops, that's meant to be a 4 plus 1. And if you plug all of this in, you do, in fact, get an answer of minus 35, which means that our formula is working. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.